Welcome back to Word Module 1. This assignment is called Special Features. And if you look at the bottom left corner on the status bar, it's one of three pages, 94 words, and there it looks to be one spelling error. So this assignment, every line is actually a direction. And the direction is going to focus on working off of the home tab in the font group and a little bit in the paragraph group. We'll either be using the font group in the ribbon or the mini toolbar or the dialog box launcher. So what we'll be doing is selecting each line and following the direction on that line. So the best thing to do instead of having to highlight all the words is take the mouse and go over to the far left so that it changes to a um, a right pointing arrow in the in selection area and you just point and just click once. Now the direction here is to change this to lowercase so you don't want to type it all over in lowercase. What you'll do in the ribbon in the font group is choose change case and select lowercase and it put it all into lowercase. The next line point and click. This one change case now shows in your mini toolbar because we've used it so it's a recent feature that you've activated so we can click it from here or go up here either way it's up to you so i'll choose change case and this one's all uppercase point and click the next line the direction is to capitalize each word so change case capitalize each word next line select this one is um, small caps preview, but it's not an option in here. It's actually, it's not in the ribbon either, in the font group. We'll have to click the dialog box launcher. And it's in effects, and it's right here. But before I click it, notice in the preview, the capital S, and then lowercase, capital C, so forth. I'm going to click it. What it does is it puts it in all caps, but the S is a little bit larger than the rest of the word. The C is a little larger and the P is a little larger. So that's small caps and then click OK. Next one, we're going to change the font color. So the default setting is automatic, but if you were to change the font color, the choice selection default is red. If you don't want red, you can click the down arrow and select a different color. Next. Um, instruction is bold text. You can do it right here from the mini toolbar or control B. Next line, italic. Next line, underline. Notice there's no underline, uh, arrow pointing like there is up here. So I'll just click underline. Um, and we'll go into this one in a minute. But if I come back up here anywhere, click anywhere, none of these show. But if I click anywhere on this line, it's showing that I have it on bold. If I click here, italic is showing, and if I click anywhere here, underline is showing. So on this line, um, we want to get fancy with the underline, so not just the default setting underline, click the down arrow. Now you do have choices from here, but then once you select it, you have to come back here again to pick a color. So instead, go right to more underlines. This is the font color, so we'll leave that at automatic. And you can select whatever style of um, dashes. There, your, your preview if you want. And then choose a color. And it shows in your preview. And then click OK. On the next one, it's really not 42. It should be 4 squared, 4 to the power of 2. So select just the 2. And in the font group, choose superscript or you could do control shift and the plus key and it gives you that raised figure. Now this one, according to the periodic table, it should be a, a, a sub two, it should be dropped, H2O. So I'm gonna click sub script or I could do control and the equals and it drops it. The next one, select the, the line, the text, and we want it strike through. So it's right here in the font group and it puts a line through it. Uh, this would be uh, a, something that you would probably use if you were editing your own work and you're not sure if you want to keep that word there. It's a possibility. You don't want to delete it completely and forget about it, so you can just put a line through it and then go back and decide if you want to keep it or get rid of it. Double strike through, just to show you there is a double strike through. It's not showing here, so you'd have to go to the, the font dialog 
drop box and choose double script here. Double strike through shows your preview and OK. The next one I'm going to select again point and click and the default color for highlighting is yellow. So that highlights it. And then if you wanted to select the next line and you wanted a different color, you would choose the down arrow and choose a different color. If you didn't want that color, you would select and choose no color, but I'll leave it at that. This one, you want to get rid of all the formatting and go back to the default Calibri size 11. So there's actually a feature for clear all formatting. And it goes back to the Calibri 11. Next one, shade text. So carefully select. Notice I didn't use this one because I don't want that extra space after the T. I just want at the T. Then I'm going to go to the tipped over paint bucket and select a color of shading. It's, it's similar to highlighting, but you'll see in a minute what else it does. Um, and there's also more color choices with the tipped over paint bucket and you could go into more colors. So select a color. Now I'm going to select this one, but I'm just going to point and click. So it selects that empty space after shading was in there, but I'm going to just click the same color or you can pick a different color, but I want to show you the difference. So if you just go to the last letter, it just shades those two words. If you select the whole line, even that empty space after, it'll do the whole line. And I just want to show you what is that empty space after. So let me just undo this. So if I put this on, which is called show hide, when I select, notice it was only to the T. If I select the whole thing, it's selecting the whole, the paragraph symbol, which means the whole line. That's why it's going across. I'll turn that off. Um, the, the just to go back for a second, this, this button here, the show hide, uh, if I come up to the beginning just to show you, the raised dots mean space bars. If I had a period at the end of a sentence, it would be lower, just to show you that. And this paragraph symbol means I pressed enter here and then here again. We'll go into get into this later. So I'm going to turn that off and we'll continue where we left off. So um, I typed the word Springfield twice and they're both have the same spelling error, but it's not read on the one that's in uppercase because what happens is the spell check default setting is um, turned off for checking words that are in capital letters because generally words that are in capital letters are probably um, acronyms like STCC. So that would be a spelling error. So they don't want it to show as an error. So if you wanted to turn it um, so that it would spell check four words in caps, what you would do is choose file on the very bottom of, of the um, side margin, go down to options and then choose proofing. And right now it's ignoring the words in uppercase. So uncheck it and then click OK. And now it's in red. So you can go ahead and right click and choose the correct spelling. Right click and choose the correct spelling. And now it'll check for both lowercase and uppercase words. Text effects. There's a shortcut and then there's the word art, which is um, there's more steps to it, but there's also more features. So text effects, if you just select the text, so just click, it's right in here, almost look like a stencil letter. So you can go ahead and select any style you would like for text effects. And you can make it a little bigger if you want. And I just wanna, if you wanted to change the color of the text effects, you could go into outline and select a different color. And you can also, there's other effects in here where you can get a shadowy effect on the outer edge. You could also, everything is individual reflection. You wanna have like a mirror reflection to it. And there's also glow if you wanted to glow around it. And that's about it. So that's, text effects. Word art is similar, but a little different. So select the text and it's in the insert tab and it's way over here. It's called word art. It's in the text group. 
Now it looks very similar to what we just selected for um, text effects, but once you select the style you want, doesn't matter, you don't have to stay with that color. Here is the text fill. Do you want the inside one color and the outside a different color? And then here we go with the text effects. Do you want that shadow effect? Do you want a reflection? And then um, I'm going to move this up. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, the, the glow is there. They have beveled effect, which is pretty um, pretty neat to look. Has like a um, interesting curve on the the letters. Um, there's an also a 3D effect, which um, puts it on a slant if you'd like. My favorite is transform. This is when you see in different flyers. I'm not getting a live preview. Sometimes if you hover over these, you should get a preview of what it looks like. For some reason, my live preview, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then if you wanted to move this, you have to have these four arrows and then you drag it up a little bit. So text effects is just the letters and you could change them, you could get rid of the formatting. Word art, do you notice that it has that box around it? It becomes an object, whereas this is still just plain text. This is an object. The next is working with what's called thesaurus. So let's say, I'm just going to press enter to push that down. Um, you use the word improve way too many times, so you need to think of another word that has the same meaning but it's not improve. So I'm going to double click improve and then I'll choose review. This is the spelling and ch grammar check, but I'm going to go to thesaurus and it opens up a window pane on the right hand side and because I selected improve, it's showing here, it's looking up the word improve and other words that have the same meaning. And you have a lot to choose from. So I'm going to use enhance, but if I click enhance, it's looking enhance up. What I need to do is when I find the word I want is go over to that, um, hover over it and you get that little arrow. Don't click on this side, click on the arrow side and choose insert and it changes it. And what's nice about this, you don't have to have the word selected or you don't have, what happens if you wanted to you look up excellent, another word for excellent. You can keep using this thesaurus to change and find what, um, to improve your vocabulary and your papers. So it's a great resource. So I'm just gonna close out of there. Special characters. Um, in here, sometimes you need a copyright symbol. It's in, again, insert, symbol, and these are like the most frequently used um, symbols that you may have used recently or ones that they consider popular. So there's two. We'll go into symbols in a minute, but I'm going to special characters. There's the copyright and then you can insert it. And maybe you wanted to see that paragraph symbol. Trademark, insert. The other symbols, if you wanted um, symbols, sometimes um, certain um, Names have accent marks on them, so I'm going to change this to Calibri. And um, so I changed the font to be Calibri so it matches the font type here. And if I wanted, for example, my first name has an accent on the second E, so I would click that and insert it so it have that exact um, symbol on the letter. Um, some people have um, the tildes on them, and you would select that. And insert it so it looks like you took the time to, um, so, to to put the accent symbol on someone's name for them so you could do that as well and a um, couple more things um, this one ordinal numbers so if you typed um, I'm just gonna press enter here so it goes on the next line it type I type 1 ST for first once I press spacebar, it changes it to that super script. So second, and again, it doesn't happen until I press the spacebar and so forth. So it doesn't happen until you press the spacebar. This one, um, days of the week, as you type, I'm going to type it in lowercase. When I get to the fourth letter, it shows up what it should be. So I just press enter and it types it for me. Wednesday, there you go. Just press enter. Also for the months of the year. 
fourth letter, January, fourth letter. It won't do um, the short month.